by now, we've all gone through the Dwight Mayer of Dwight Howard's journey through the NBA. He started in Orlando as a man-child with unlimited potential and went to making us wonder if Stan Van Gundy had something stronger in his can of Pepsi. He was traded to the Lakers where Kobe was the man and it didn't help that he was rehabbing from severe back surgery. Kobe and him never clicked, he didn't like the offense, so he decided to leave after one year and join the Houston Rockets. On paper, this looks like a match made in heaven with James Harden, Chandler Parsons, and Jeremy Lin forming a talented nucleus. Let's dive deep into some stats to see if Dwight Howard packs enough gas to launch the Rockets into space. Let's start by looking at overall offense. The Rockets had a high octane attack that ranked fifth in the league and led the league when they ran pick and roll with the ball handler finishing the play. Most notably, they only posted up 4.3% of the time and were ranked a very poor 26th out of 30 teams. One reason Dwight wanted out of Los Angeles was because he didn't get enough post-up opportunities. What's frightening about this notion is that he used half of all Laker post-ups, but only ranked in the 37th percentile. Interestingly, he was very balanced on his post-ups from each side and shoulder turn. His biggest issue is with footwork and touch, as any move that doesn't result in a dunk becomes a struggle for him. He was a bit better on the right side of the floor, although he was most efficient when he was on the left block and turning over his right shoulder toward the baseline. You have to factor in Dwight's recovery from injury as part of his post-up issues. Looking at his best offensive year in 2010-2011, you'll see his ranking was in the 71st percentile and all his numbers were much better. It's safe to say that with enough healing, Dwight will be somewhere in between, which will definitely be an upgrade to the Rockets post-up play. Dwight's best offensive option by far is when he sets a ball screen and rolls to the hoop. There isn't a big man who can keep up with him and the weak side rotation is always with someone too small to handle him. Last year, the Rockets relied on Ashik on half of their role man plays. And while they were above average, Dwight Howard will not only dominate this category, but will also increase the number of times the Rockets utilize it. Another key category is offensive rebounds and putbacks. The Rockets relied mostly on Ashik in this category, and while his offensive rebounding percentage was higher than Dwight's, again, you have to factor in the back injury, Ashik is just not a good finisher at the rim. With the pace the Rockets play at and the number of shots they'll get at the rim, Dwight will have a field day grabbing the offensive board and slamming it home. Let's move on to the defensive side of things, where the advantage of Dwight over Ashik isn't quite as clear. Ashik is one of the top defensive centers in the league, excellent at blocking and pressuring shots, rotating to help, and grabbing tough rebounds in a workmanlike manner. Dwight Howard, when healthy, takes defense to a whole new level that transcends simple fundamentals. He has the sheer physical ability to alter shots no one else can and grab the toughest of rebounds. He is a complete defensive anchor, allowing his teammates to gamble on the perimeter and wreak havoc on opposing offenses. While synergy defensive stats are a bit dubious, we can use them as a starting point and on post defense, Ashik isn't even close to the defender Dwight is even with a bad back. Dwight can literally shut down an opposing center's post game to the extent the offense won't even try it. Ashik's pick and roll defense on the ball handler had an excellent rating and he is great at hustling to contain the dribble. This was an area Dwight struggled with primarily because his mobility was compromised. At the height of his powers, he was even better than Ashik at stopping this play. One area the Rockets are going to clearly improve on is their defense against the pick and roll roll man. Ashik struggled mightily, although the team defense deserves the blame as well. Dwight Howard presents a big upgrade when he's healthy, and last year's rating actually matched his output from 2010 anyway. Defensive presence and intimidation is not easy to measure, 
but one place to start is the number of shots opposing offenses get in the lane. You can see that the Rockets allowed about 40% of the total shots in the restricted area, which was quite good. With the Lakers, Dwight was in a tough situation with poor defenders on the perimeter all around him. But the Lakers only gave up 41% in the restricted area. And at the height of his powers in 2010, the Magic only gave up 35.5% of their shots at the rim. Of course, no discussion of Dwight is complete without bringing up his god-awful free throw shooting percentage. He simply has been a disaster the last two years. But perhaps settling in Houston with a long contract and financial worries taken away, he can relax and get back to hitting 60%, which is what he averaged through the first seven years of his career. Either way, the Rockets were dealing with Oshik hitting only 56% of his free throws last year, so it's almost even. Another thing to consider is that there is a positive effect to Dwight drawing lots of fouls, since it gets the Rockets into the bonus quicker, allowing guys like James Harden and Chandler Parsons to attack the rim and get their own free throws. As long as the Rockets don't move Oshik, they have a terrific backup who can also share some minutes on the floor with Dwight. They're going to need this option when facing teams like the Memphis Grizzlies and San Antonio Spurs, so getting them experienced together will be important. So, in the end, what will Dwight Howard's effect be on the Rockets? Certainly, adding a player of his talent will improve their record. It's tough to say how many more games they'll win. In a brutal Western Conference, any movement up the standings will be cause for celebration. If they get good enough play from Jeremy Lin and Patrick Beverly, they'll be able to challenge the top teams in the West and cause some real damage come playoff time. The biggest key to all of this, of course, is how Dwight Howard fits in both physically, provided his back is healed, and in the locker room, where grizzled veteran experience and leadership is at a minimum.